Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another tutorial about Ansible. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable and affordable VPS in the cloud, SkySilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. In this video, we're going to take a look on how to localize our Ansible options in order to be manageable and shareable between multiple projects. In the previous lesson, we saw how to connect Ansible and how to ping our server by updating the etc Ansible hosts file. This is the global host file that Ansible looks into our system whenever we trigger a command. This is great if we are the only one using Ansible and we're planning to use it only in one machine, but it's not really scalable, it's not really a great choice when it comes to using the same Ansible configuration on multiple projects. So let's take a look on how to set up Ansible on a local folder base. First of all, let's delete this IP from our host file and then we can save the file and close it. And of course, now if we try to ping all the hosts that we have, we're going to have a warning because we didn't specify any IP address in our host file. So now let's set it up locally. I created a folder called Ansible tutorial, but you can call the folder in whatever location you want in your system. It doesn't have to be in any specific location. Inside this folder, I'm going to create the first file, and the first file is going to be called ansible.cfg. And this is a config file that Ansible automatically looks for it in the location we trigger that specific Ansible command. If it doesn't find anything like ansible.cfg file, it grabs the default configuration in our system. Here we can override some default configuration and the defaults is a group where a bunch of options can be set. In the defaults group, we can set first which inventory Ansible should use. And the inventory is basically the file that handles the list of IP addresses that we want to use to connect. And of course, we can specify this very own location by typing dot forward slash and say, hey, just use the hosts file. And of course, we don't have any host file in this directory. So let's create a new one right now and let's call it just hosts. We don't need to specify any extension for this file because this is an INE file or ENE file, whatever you want to call it. And here we can use a really simple syntax that doesn't require any special character. So we can simply write the same thing that we had in the system hosts file so we can paste our IP address. If we do that, automatically Ansible will catch everything that we have here. So if we have a list of multiple servers that we want to ping all at once, we can have this full list of server here. But if we have multiple servers and we don't want to ping them all or we don't want to trigger all the tasks that we're going to define later for all the servers in once, we can split or separate these specific IP addresses in unique dedicated categories. So like the same way that we did in our Ansible config file, we can specify a category in between square brackets called however you want. I'm going to call these web. And then I could potentially, but now I don't have another server, I'm going to set it up in a later moment. I could potentially have these other IP that belongs to the staging category. And I'm going to have another IP, for example, 122, that belongs to the production category. So we could potentially tell to Ansible, hey, just ping the web or just deploy on staging or just update PHP on production. And we're going to take a look on how to do it just in a bit. This is just to show you how flexible is the host file that it's basically a really simple and streamlined file where we could have uh, 10, 20, 100 different IP addresses and perform different tasks and different actions on all these servers all at once with just one simple command. In the Ansible config file, we can specify also the type of transport that by default Ansible uses a smart type of transport. The transport is the way that Ansible connects to your server and we could specify two different options. We could specify the SSH or the Paramico, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these are two different plugins in order to have an SSH connection. If you leave smart, 
automatically Ansible will detect which plugin is available in your system and which type of connection your server accepts and it's going to automatically select the best one for you. So let's just leave it like that. Now we can open once again our terminal and we can trigger once again Ansible all the action dash M ping and with the user root. If we hit enter, we're going to have the response that the first one of course points to the correct IP address that we actually have that I actually have and I'm connected via SSH. The other two are unreachable because the SSH cannot connect to the specific host. But because we specified all, automatically Ansible is connecting to or trying to ping all these servers at once. But these two, we don't have it. So we can also tell to Ansible, hey, we don't want to ping them all, but I just want to ping the web category. So just that IP that belongs in the web category. And if I hit enter, automatically I'm going to have a successful call, which is great. We can improve a little bit of our life and simplify our action by specifying the type of user that Ansible should use automatically when connecting to a specific host. So let's delete these two because are pretty useless. We can say to Ansible, hey, whenever we need an SSH user, just actually use the root. Don't use the default user and don't use anything else, just use root. By saying this, we have the ability in our terminal to, yes, yeah, specify the same command, but we can skip and avoid to specify the user command root because automatically we already set it in the host's file. If we hit enter, the command will be successful without us specifying the root user, which is really helpful. So this was a super quick lesson to show you how to set up Ansible locally in a specific folder, because now we have these two files that we can share with multiple developers that they work on the same project, and we can all set up the same type of task and the same type of actions and connect to the same host servers without the necessity of updating the configuration file, or the host file on a machine base. Everything can be in this folder uploaded on a GitHub repository or whatever, and everyone can have the same exact configuration without actually writing anything. In the description below, you can find the links to the Ansible configuration file to check the full list of options and attributes that you can update in order to properly set up Ansible in the way you want it. And also there's a link to a config file example on GitHub where you can see the full list of attributes, which is kind of overwhelming, but at least you have a, an easy go-to place where you can cope pays all the presets that you would need in a specific project. In the next lesson, we're going to see how to actually create our first playbook and write some cool tasks in order to automate a lot of things in our server. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys like it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.